Introspection is one of those terms from psychology's history that is difficult to define. James Mark Baldwin's 1901 Dictionary of Philosophy and Psychology defined it as follows, attention on the part of an individual to his own mental states and processes, as they occur, with a view of knowing more about them. Perhaps a simplistic way of summarizing this would be to say that introspection is the observation of consciousness as a means of seeing the mind. But a single definition poses a problem, because introspection was defined and used by different psychologists in different ways. This short film will briefly introduce two of these ways. Wilhelm Wundt is often credited with opening the first experimental laboratory in psychology at the University of Leipzig in 1879. Wundt used introspection in a very specific and limited way. He carefully distinguished between two types of introspection, self-observation and internal perception. Self-observation is something we are all familiar with, a reflection on our thoughts. Wundt saw this action as unscientific because of the subjectivity inherent in it. Internal perception, on the other hand, avoided reflection and asked the subject to perceive the internal perceptions and nothing more. Wundt believed that the way to do this was through the experimental method. The strict laboratory conditions provided a way for the time to be minimized between the perception of a stimulus and the report of that perception. This removed the risk of reflection, or what he thought was even worse, the use of memory systems. The goal was for the report of the perception to be as immediate as possible following the presentation of the stimulus. This is why Wundt tended to prefer subjects who were experienced in the technique. Through practice, they responded quicker, thereby minimizing self-awareness and reflection. Let's try one of Wundt's simple perception tasks. How many letters do you perceive? In Wundt's laboratory, they found that subjects could typically perceive four to six letters after they were flashed on a screen for no more than one-tenth of a second. Let's try the same task, but with random six-letter words. In this task, Wundt's subjects perceive four to six words. This now represents 24 to 36 individual letters in one-tenth of a second. But the subjects didn't perceive them as individual letters. They saw them only as whole words, which reinforced the idea that words could be perceived as quickly as letters. An important concept in Wundt's introspective method was what he called apperception. Apperception explains how we organize and make sense of our experiences. It is through this organization, this apperception, that what would otherwise be only a series of elementary sensations becomes a unified whole. Wundt's example of a metronome's beats can help to explain apperception. A metronome is an instrument that emits a sound at a regular interval. Wundt would set the metronome and ask you to pay attention to the experiences that the sound arises within you. If you've listened to a metronome before, you may have noticed that even though the beats are all technically identical in intensity, the experience that they produce is not. You may hear every second beat as louder than the one that came before it. Wundt explained that our difficulty in hearing the beats at exactly the same intensity is due to the fact that our consciousness is rhythmically disposed. We are organizing the individual beats into a unified whole. This is the process of apperception. Wundt emphasized that scientific introspection, or internal perception, could only be used to investigate certain types of psychological phenomena. He primarily focused on sensation and perception. Reports of introspection were limited to judgments of size, intensity, and duration of the stimuli presented. Wundt argued that our internal perception is only scientific when it is linked to a controlled external stimulus. In the United States, one of the most ardent proponents of introspection was Edward Bradford Titchener. Titchener ran the psychology laboratory at Cornell University, where he introduced a type of introspection that combined his British training at Oxford with his doctoral studies at Leipzig under Wundt. Titchener defined introspection generally as observation. In contrast to Wundt, he believed that it allowed us to identify elementary sensations which, when put together, produced complex experience. Titchener went beyond Wundt's preference for experienced subjects and insisted on training. His graduate students were required to practice their introspections and participate in one another's research projects as subjects. One of his students recalled carrying around a little notebook at all times in order to record her introspections after encountering different events throughout the regular course of the day. Let's try a simple example of Titchener's style of introspection. What do you see? If your answer is simply a duck, Titchener would send you back for more training. You've made what he called a stimulus error.
When presented with this stimulus, Titchener would expect you to reply with a description like, white arouses feelings of pleasantness, arouses a certain type of imagery, visual perhaps, smooth, tactically speaking. In a good introspection, there would be no meaning whatsoever. That is to say, that it is not the external object that produces this observable material that is being investigated through Titchener's method of introspection. In our example, this means that our interest is not in the duck as a duck. Our interest is instead on the sensations, images, and feelings that the duck produces. What about a non-visual example? The instrument shown here is an atheometer, which was used to apply pressure to a subject's arm in two places at the same time. The distance between the two points would be changed in each successive application to the skin. The subject was required to indicate whether they perceived a single point or two separate points after each time they were touched with the instrument. Titchener had the thesis that since the skin and the eye were developed from the same tissue, embryologically speaking, the skin could do just what the eye could do in detecting small differences. Titchener applied introspection to areas that Wundt did not, including memory, thought, and feelings. Wundt criticized Titchener for his expansion of the introspective method to these areas and also for his recording of the feelings that a subject experienced when they were presented with a stimulus. Titchener and Wundt placed the same emphasis on method and laboratory work in their use of introspection. They just didn't agree on how far introspection could take the new experimental psychology. Yeah.